click the bell icon to get latest videos from Ikeda. Hello friends. So we have now studied up till now the diffraction at a single slit, the diffraction at a double slit and now in this particular video we will be studying the diffraction at the n slits. This is also one can say a diffraction and n slits is also referred to as so this is also known as diffraction at a diffraction grating. So let us see how is it that we are going to treat the diffraction at n slits or in a diffraction grating. What we have is when we say n slits we have an opaque part and we have a transparent part we have an we have a transparent part once again an opaque part followed once again by a transparent part and followed once again by a opaque part so on and so forth the distance or rather the width of the transparent part we are assuming it to be b the width of the opaque part we are assuming it to be a so d is equal to a plus b so this is our first assumption at the same time now we are assuming that let us there is a monochromatic light that is falling on this plane transmission grating or on this n slits and when it falls on this n slits from the theory of a single slit you know that there will be a diffraction that will be occurring here we have not shown the individual diffractions but rather we have shown only a single representative diffraction by this wave over here similarly for the slit over here or for the transparent part over here which is adjacent to the slit we have shown a representative diffraction over here so on and so forth over here now when diffraction occurs let us now focus only on the diffraction at a single slit when this wave comes over here when the plane wave comes over here there are two things which may happen first of all it may get it may pass unhindered or it may get diffracted all such collections of unhindered waves will form an intensity pattern at the center that is at p0 you know that if a plane wave strikes any single slit it will actually be considered or rather it will actually be transformed into various Huygen wave sources at this point and each wave source will actually generate its own wave consider one such wave that is diffracted at an angle theta from the undeviated wave now when this wave comes in contact with the lens it will actually get focused at a point p1 similarly there are other waves that are being generated over here due to the Huygen wavelets and we are considering a collection of all those wavelets that are getting diffracted at a angle theta remember we are focusing only on the single slit and a collection of all these waves will actually fall at p1 or rather it will be focused at the point p1 and depending upon the phase difference we will either have a maxima or a minima at the point p1 we know from the single slit theory that the collective amplitude of all the waves that are diffracted by an angle theta from a single slit is given by the factor amplitude a is equal to a into sine of beta upon beta where beta is the phase difference and then where beta is equal to pi into b into sine theta upon lambda let us call this equation as O1. Now, let us move to the second slit. 
we can repeat the same argument for the second slit and you can say that the collective amplitude of all these waves emerging from here and getting focused at the point P1 is once again given by the factor A is equal to A sin beta upon beta. So on and so forth, the same thing will happen at this slit also. So now, let us, we know that there is, there are going to be diffracted rays coming from the slit 1, coming from the slit 2 and coming from the slit 3, right? And also coming from the slit 4. We now intend to find out what will be the net intensity pattern at the point P. But mind you, we have not considered the another factor. And another factor or is arising due to the phase. Now which phase that we are seeing over here? The phase difference between a wave that is diffracted from the slit 1 and the phase difference between a corresponding wave diffracted from the slit 2. So there is going to be a phase difference between them. And this phase difference is not going to be the same as that of beta. It is going to be something different. And this value is equal to gamma is equal to pi into d into sin theta divided by lambda. We will now see it from the picture. Why is it that I am taking this value as pi d into sin theta upon lambda. We simply draw a perpendicular over here. We drop a perpendicular right up till here and the reason why we drop a perpendicular is we want to find out the optical path difference. So what is the optical path difference between a ray that is emerging from the slit 1 to a corresponding ray that is emerging from the slit 2? The part difference will be given by this factor. From geometry, since this angle is theta, this angle 2 turns out to be theta. And you can see for yourself that sin theta will actually be equal to this value. It will actually be equal to this value, opposite side, divided by the hypotenuse. That is nothing but B. You will write it down. So in this case, you will have sine theta is actually equal to the opposite side, which is going to be the optical path difference divided by the value d. And hence your optical path difference is equal to your optical path difference will turn out to be d into sine theta, which in terms of phase, it will be equal to and multiply this by 2 pi upon lambda and which actually turns out to be gamma is equal to pi d into sin theta upon lambda. So from here, you can also say that your 2 gamma is actually equal to 2 into pi into d into sin theta divided by lambda. So what is the phase difference between this, the total thing? The phase difference is given by a factor 2 into gamma. So that's it. So from here, from this discussion, we have obtained the phase difference between the corresponding rays that are actually being emitted from a single slit that turns out to be beta. And once again, the phase difference between the corresponding rays from, from the consecutive slits which are equal to 2 gamma which is equal to 2 pi d into sin theta upon lambda. So my entire problem students now actually boils down to only two concepts. I know that every single slit is going to give me a wave that is corresponding to an amplitude of a into sin beta upon beta and this wave is actually being emerging from each and every slit and the phase difference between n such waves that is being liberated or emitted from n such slits is equal to 2 gamma. So that is basically the phase difference between two such 
consecutive waves given by the corresponding wavelets right from two side slits that are actually placed side by side so now let us look at it from the vector perspective so as we have said previously that the entire problem of determining the intensity distribution from a n slit diffraction grating actually reduces to finding out what is the resultant due to n such waves each of amplitude a sin beta upon beta and each wave being in a phase difference of around 2 gamma and this factor 2 gamma is equal to 2 pi d into sin theta upon lambda. So how do we tackle this particular problem? From the vector method we can prove the fact that if at all there are n such vectors and each of amplitude a and with a phase difference of phi then the resultant of all these vectors is given by the following parameter. So first of all we will draw the vectors, draw the resultant, resolve r, find out the final value. The second thing, so what? how we are going to proceed is we are actually going to draw each vector this will be a very general case each of amplitude let us say a and each with a phase difference of around phi we are going to resolve the vector r and going to find out its magnitude let us see how we do it so let us consider the vector a of amplitude a another vector of amplitude a and making an angle out over here that is given by phi. So phi becomes the phase difference between this wave and this wave. Once again so on and so forth I go on increasing these values over here and find out the phase difference phi and there are various elements but for simplicity we are taking only three. Here this is going to be your resultant r. So the magnitude of the resultant vector is given by a sine of n phi by 2 into sine of phi by 2. Let us now apply this particular result to the present case of diffraction due to n slits. So what is the value of a over here? In the case of the single slit, the value of a is actually turning out to be a into sine of beta upon beta. So this was the constant phase difference between the various wavelets that were being diffracted from the n slits. And what is the value of this component over here? The value of small n is actually equal to capital N. And as I told you, the value of the phase difference between the diffracted rays from, from every consecutive slits is equal to 2 gamma. So now let us write that down over here. So this factor will now turn to be sine of n into 2 gamma upon 2. This divided by sine of 2 gamma divided by 2. Hence the resultant will actually be equal to a into sine of beta upon beta into sine of n into gamma this divided by sine of gamma so this becomes your this becomes your resultant amplitude and as we know that the intensity is the square of the amplitude. Therefore, I will take the square of this factor and write this down as i is equal to r square is equal to a square into sine beta upon beta the whole square into sine of n gamma this divided by sine of gamma. 
the whole square. And, and this is an expression for the intensity pattern in a n-slip direction. Sincere thanks students for watching this particular video. Stay tuned to Ekira and do subscribe to our channel Ekira. Thanks a lot.